Boom! Just like that, what is going on? Welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going through the perfect leg day. I don't even gotta say it because you can see it. I'm a cool YouTuber now, guys. I've got a whiteboard, that means business now. It's strictly business. Shredforlife.com. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing, dropping that first like, dropping that first comment. So in this video, we've got a whiteboard. It's a little too big. I don't think I know enough to fill this whiteboard, so we're gonna write big. I have goal of highlighting more workouts that I do and going into more detail. Uh, I post my workouts every day over on Instagram. A lot of you know. If you did not know that, over on my Instagram profile, for the last year, I've posted every workout I've ever done. It's a lot of work, but it's fun work, and I enjoy it. Brian, is this quad targeted? Is it glute targeted? Is it hamstring targeted? Is it just calves? So what earns this workout the title of the perfect leg day? That's a pretty tall claim. Well, it's a well-rounded leg day. That's why I'm calling it that. A lot of individuals like to hit legs multiple times per week, often twice per week, and they'll split it up, a quad dominant day, and then a glute hamstring dominant day. But I've been running the Build Man program and just took a deload and then had some things happen to my schedule, got busy, and kind of went off the plan for a little bit. So now I'm just getting reacclimated as I have, have not hit legs in the last week. Without further ado, without further ado, let's get into this workout. You may have a question about warming up. In a previous YouTube video I posted a couple months ago, I went through a full leg day warm up. You can go ahead and hit that up. I also posted it on my IG story. I will link those in the description below. First movement is barbell back squats. This is the king leg day movement. I'm sure it doesn't come as a surprise to you. Great overall muscle builder, compound lift, primary mover of the workout targeting the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes. I'm training in an intensity block in my weight training session. So you can see I'm hitting four sets of four here. If you're training for strength, wise to stick in the four to six rep range. If you're training for hypertrophy or muscle size growth, strength growth as well, you can train in a higher rep range in the eight to 12 up to 15 rep range. You can see some cues on the screen, talk through the barbell back squat ones quickly because it's important. What you're gonna do is unrack the bar, lifting with your back and then flexing at the knees. You're gonna do a two-step or three-step walkout. Make sure you have even footing. Feet planted slightly wider than shoulder width. Toes, toes pointed slightly outwards. Take a deep breath, brace, and then you break at the knees. Drive the butt back, keep the chest up, but don't think you have to keep the chest like super erect, I don't want you guys dropping the bar. I'm using a low bar squat form here, by the way, so the bar is sitting below my traps. A little more glute and hamstring engagement, you can lift a little heavier when you use a low bar squat form. However, the most common, and what I encourage my beginners to use, is high bar squats when the bar is on top of your traps and a bit more quad targeting. So either way, we're gonna have about a one second descent, and then we're gonna explode out of the hole, no pause here, and then right at the Pretty much the top of the movement, you're gonna exhale, reset, and repeat the movement. So right out the gate, movement one, we've crushed the quads, we've crushed the glutes. Haven't really crushed the hamstrings because in the barbell back squat, they're not the most engaged, but nonetheless, we have engaged them, stimulated them, stimulated them. Number two is front squats. This is our secondary movement goal of, well, the reason we have a secondary movement is to support the main movement, the primary mover, primary compound lift. And this goes for chest exercises, back exercises. So this secondary movement front squats, they are going to target your quads more so than the barbell back squat. The bar's in front of you, think front. Quads in front, posterior chain, glutes, hamstrings in the back. Front squats are gonna strengthen your back. Front squats are going to be engaging your core immensely. Gonna require a lot of core engagement and a lot of mobility because a lot of individuals have trouble getting their elbows up when they are performing the lift. There's a strong tendency for the bar to want to pull you forward. So remembering the cue, chest up, elbows up, is extremely important there. You're gonna to want to go lighter on front squats, guys. Uh, as you can see in this workout specifically, it's not always the case, but I'm, you know, I'm roughly 50% of the weight of the barbell back squat. Now, I was going for intensity here. On the front squats, you can see the rep range is higher, but nonetheless, you're gonna to wanna to go light. Now let's go on to additional compound lifts. Number three, we have, what was it? I'm thinking off the top of my head here. Walking lunges. So you can do dumbbell walking lunges. However, I love the barbell walking lunge. 
doesn't require grip strength. You can really focus on engaging those glutes, those quads. This one hammers the quads. You can also be intentional with your foot placement and where you're feeling the weight to target the glutes as well. I find the closer your steps are, the shorter your steps are, the more quad you're gonna target, and the farther you step, generally you're gonna target your glutes and hamstrings a bit. With the barbell walking lunge, because you are moving through space, because you are putting a lot of weight on one side of your body, it requires a lot of stability, there's a likelihood of injury here. So the goal with the barbell walking lunge is not to really train for strength, not training that four to six rep range, Let's leave the barbell walking lunge to be a supporting movement. Let's hit it with uh, more volume, essentially. Let's hit it with the hypertrophy range of hitting eight to 12 reps per side or up to 15 reps after the barbell walking lunge. So we've got a well-rounded quad, glute, hamstring. We've got quad, glute, little bit of hamstring. We've got quad, glute, little bit of hamstring. Now let's move on to hip thrusts. So barbell, hip thrusts, I can't multitask, are gonna target the glutes. So we're targeting the glutes with the barbell hip thrusts, targeting the hamstrings as well. Some quick cues, you can see the tips flowing on the screen. By the way, please comment if there's like too much stuff on the screen where it's like, there's like too much stimulus. I try to keep these videos value driven and not waste your time. So if it's too much, let me know and I can kind of tone it down. But on the hip thrust, some things we wanna pay attention to is engaging the glutes, really flexing the glutes before we even initiate the movement. Uh, that'll really tell your brain, tell your body where you want to feel it, and it'll keep those glutes turned on during the movement. You want to drive up directly towards the ceiling, and you want to, I like to pause at the top to really make sure I'm flexing those glutes because I, I see a big mistake with barbell hip thrusts is people are kind of just moving through the movement fast. They're not really locking out at the top and that's where we're getting a ton of glute engagement. So driving the hips up until we cannot drive them up anymore. The hips are locked out and at this point your upper leg, lower leg should be at a 90 degree angle. And then a slow and controlled descent uh, working that eccentric. Next we are going to do Romanian deadlift, many different forms of Romanian deadlifts, great for hamstrings, great for glutes. Single dumbbell RDL, single dumbbell Romanian deadlift. We can also do, uh, do it with two dumbbells, so a dumbbell in each hand. You can also just do a barbell Romanian deadlift, but I really connect with this specific variation of Romanian deadlift. Uh, requires setting up two benches and then getting a heavier dumbbell. So. Most gyms I find go up to about the 150 pound dumbbell. And for the majority, I'd say that's plenty. I'm fortunate the gym I go to has up to 200 pounds. So I'm using the 200 pound dumbbell on this one. Uh, and guys wouldn't have been able to do that when I was first starting, but over time you're able to work up. Things here with the Romanian deadlift, I would not lower the weight beyond what is comfortable. We wanna focus on driving the hips back. This one requires mobility, requires flexibility, and I don't want you guys to pull anything. I don't want you to pull a hamstring. So keeping the dumbbell close to you, driving the hips directly back, and keeping the knees in a fixed position. We don't want the hips to drop, we don't want the knees to move. What this is gonna allow us to do is to engage those hamstrings and engage those glutes. I want you guys, when you're doing this movement, to think, hips directly freaking back, all right? Not moving in any other plane, not going down. So at this point, we've got a pretty damn well-rounded leg day and now we're gonna finish it off with calf raises. Calves. Training calves, I think everyone can train calves a bit more. I know I'm in that boat. Calves can definitely handle a higher rep range. So calves, I'd say anywhere from 10 to 20 rep range. You can maybe go a little bit below, you can do eight, um, but this is general 10 to 20 reps. And we're hitting four sets here, just because, I mean, these other movements do engage the calves, but direct calf training, I want to be sure I'm getting it in, so we're hitting four sets here. And, uh, and that's gonna be the leg day, guys. I do want to say, workouts that I share with you, I do my best to formulate them in a way that are gonna be based in science to get you stronger, but also you can do in the majority of gyms. This is great for anyone who's hitting legs once per week or twice per week. 
I would just encourage you to perhaps decrease the training volume and the intensity if you are gonna be hitting uh, legs twice per week. You can do this leg workout twice per week, 100%. And if you wanna take the guesswork out of it, this is on the Build Man program uh, that I have been running. I'm currently experimenting with the advanced level two of Build Man program. And this program is designed to help you gain muscle and gain strength in a lean gain phase. And if you're on a fat loss phase, you can join one of my shred programs. You can hit up shredderforlife.com. All right, my friends, that's gonna be it. Brian DeCosta, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. Subscribe if you are not. Feels good to be back on the channel a bit more consistently. I'll be seeing you guys soon. See ya.